Good evening and welcome to the webinar on small modular reactors. We will just wait a minute or so for more participants to join and then we'll start in a moment. Okay, it is the top of the hour. Let's get started. Good evening again, everyone, and thank you for joining today's session on small modular reactors. My name is Andrea Bauer, and I work in the Regulatory Policy Directorate at the CNSC, and I am joined by my esteemed CNSC colleagues. Before we officially start with the webinar, I would like to begin by recognizing that our participants today are located in many different parts of the country. Today, I am speaking to you from the traditional unceded territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabe peoples. I will pause for a few seconds in silence so that each of us can acknowledge the treaty and or traditional territory for our respective locations. Please take this time to provide your gratitude and acknowledgement for the land. Thank you for your acknowledgement. Okay, now on to the webinar. We would like to dedicate the first minute or so by asking a polling question. We encourage everyone to answer these questions as this will help us gather information and feedback on this webinar and contribute to our continuous improvement on our engagement and outreach activities. For those that may not be familiar with this function in Zoom, your individual answers uh, will not be displayed, only the overall results will be shown. Tiffany, can you please pull up the polling question? Okay. So the question is, how would you rate your current understanding of how the CNSC regulates SMRs? And the options are excellent, good, fair, and poor. Okay. So I'll give a few more moments to those that may need a little more time. All right, so I think we can stop it there. Okay, so let's look at the results together. Um, so I noticed that quite a few of you have a fair understanding. Uh, we hope that this webinar will improve your understanding irrespective of how well you know the subject matter. And thank you all for participating. We very much appreciate your input. Uh, and I do also want to highlight that at the end of the webinar, following the Q&As, there will be several more polling questions. So now on to the rules of engagement before we proceed with the topic of the hour. If you have questions during the webinar, we ask that you submit them using the Q&A function found at the bottom of the screen. The chat and raise hand function in Zoom will not be in use during the webinar. So please send your questions using the Q&A function. As a reminder, the questions should only be focused on the content of today's webinar and only those within scope will be addressed. We would also kindly ask that your questions be presented in a respectful and professional manner. Time permitting, we will address all of your questions. Any questions not answered today, we encourage you to resubmit through the info account email address found on the CNSC website. Also, all questions submitted through the Q&A function will be read out during the Q&A session in an anonymous manner. If you do not submit your question anonymously, your name will be displayed next to your question to all participants as they are marked answered. Any questions outside the scope of this webinar will not be addressed as we encourage you to submit them through the info account email address. Also, we would like to advise that this session is being recorded. This is done intently for our internal records as a means of reference material. However, we are currently looking into options in posting recorded sessions on the CNSC website. 
And finally, we will email all registered participants a PDF version of this presentation as well. Okay, without further ado, let's get started with the presentation. Uh, I will provide some background information on the CNSC as an introduction, and then we'll hand it over to my colleagues who will speak more specifically about SMRs. Next slide, please. So the three presenters for the topic of the hour will be Sarah Eaton, Director of the Advanced Reactor Licensing Division. Melanie Rickard could unfortunately not be here today, so Stephen Cook will be taking over. And then Dylan Sukumar, Project Officer in the Advanced Reactor Licensing Division. Next slide, please. So the main objective of today's presentation is to provide an overview of SMRs in Canada and CNSC's role. It will also answer questions such as, who is the CNSC and what do we do? What are SMRs? SMR applications in Canada? CNSC licensing of SMRs? What is a vendor design review? And how to stay informed? So I'll now provide a brief overview of CNSC's role. Starting with our mandate. So the CNSC regulates to prevent unreasonable risk to the environment, health and safety of Canadians, and national security. We have been overseeing nuclear safety in Canada for over 75 years. Originally created as the Atomic Energy Control Board in 1946, we became the Canadian Nuclear Safety Commission in the year 2000 through the Nuclear Safety and Control Act. Our mandate as described in the NSCA defines what the CNSC is responsible for. The CNSC is the sole authority in Canada to regulate the development, production, and use of nuclear energy, and the production, possession, and use of nuclear substances, prescribed equipment, and prescribed information in order to prevent unreasonable risk. As illustrated here, the CNSC mandate has three pillars. The first is to regulate the use of nuclear energy and materials to protect the health, safety, security, and environment for Canadians. The second is to implement Canada's international commitments on the peaceful use of nuclear energy. And thirdly, and somewhat unique amongst Canadian regulators, government agencies, and departments, is to disseminate objective, scientific, technical, and regulatory information to the public and Indigenous peoples. As such, the CNSC considers outreach, such as what we are doing today, to be at the core of its daily work. The CNSC does not promote nuclear activities, but it is the CNSC's job to safely regulate such activity. Next slide, please. So the Commission is an independent quasi-judicial administrative tribunal that is arm's length from the government. An important characteristic of the Commission is that unlike most government departments or agencies, they do not report to a minister, but rather directly report to Parliament through the Minister of Natural Resources. It is an important distinction and increases independence of the Commission. The Commission is also composed of up to seven members who are appointed by Governor and Council based on their qualifications and expertise. And commission proceedings are open to everyone and webcast live. Any input from Indigenous peoples, the public, and stakeholders are always welcomed. As well, all commission decisions are transparent and based on information received before and during the hearings provided by the proponent, CNSC staff, and interveners. The record of proceedings includes detailed reasons on why a license is or is not granted and is available on the CNSC website. Next slide. So as mentioned, the decision-making of the commission is supported by recommendations of CNSC staff. There are approximately 800 scientific, technical, and professional staff that work in various functions to fulfill this important role of making recommendations to support their decision-making. Equally important, CNSC staff conduct assessments on information submitted by applicants and licensees to verify that they meet requirements. They also implement commission decisions and CNSC staff develop regulatory requirements and guidance for commission approval, verify and enforce compliance with regulatory requirements. And finally, they engage the public and indigenous groups through outreach activities. 
Now, this slide here is to distinguish the responsibilities between CNSC and the licensee. And I'll start with licensees. Licensees are directly responsible for managing regulated activities in a manner that protects health, safety, security, and the environment, and that conforms with Canada's domestic and international obligations on the peaceful use of nuclear energy. The CNSC is accountable to Parliament and Canadians for assuring that these responsibilities are properly discharged. And therefore, the CNSC ensures that regulated parties are informed about requirements and provided guidance on how to meet them, and then verifies that all requirements are and continue to be met. When doing all of this, the CNSC makes independent, objective, and risk-informed decisions. And finally, it's also important to mention that this regulatory philosophy aligns with the International Atomic Energy Safety Fundamentals. So that ends my introductory overview. I will now turn it over to Stephen Cook to present the next section of the presentation. Thanks, Andrea. Uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Steve Cook. I work with the uh, CNSC's Advanced Reactor Assessment Division. Our group coordinates the vendor design review assessments for, for SMRs. And uh, I'll, be, I'll be stepping in tonight for Melanie, who could not be here. My portion of the presentation will briefly cover what an SMR is and uh, describe what's new with these reactors and why there's global interest. Next slide, slide please. Excuse me. SMR or small modular reactor is a broad term that captures some types of new reactors. The term does not refer to a specific design, but more generic, generally portrays some characteristics of these new reactors. First, they are small in comparison to the traditional nuclear generating facilities that we're more familiar with. They consist of smaller units with smaller electrical output and a smaller land footprint. This usually means simpler designs and lower capital costs. Second, they are, can be of modular design. Some de designs are proposed to, to be modular and or prefabricated and shipped to a site. This type of compact architecture may facilitate high quality and efficient construction. Also, over time, capacity of but can be grown for, by adding modules. Some des designers describe the ability to remove the reactor module as a whole and replace it or decommission it. Third, they are nuclear fission reactors. While the design and the, and the type of reactors may be different than the nuclear power plants we have in Ontario and New Brunswick, they function on the same fundamental uh, scientific principles. So fission reaction, thereby the, you know, whereby the nucleus is, is split, producing uh, energy, and that energy can be uh, uh, captured in, in, in the production of heat. The heat is ultimately converted into electricity, um, most commonly through steam cycle. The images on the right side of this particular slide, uh, they're given examples of different designs and you can see the figure next to them. So, you, you know, that'll give you an indication of the, 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 the size of, uh, of a person with re respect to some of these designs. So you can see there's some very large, small reactors and some very small, small reactors. So what's different about an SMR compared to a conventional nuclear power plant? SMRs have new designs that are sometimes referred to, some people say revolutionary or evolutionary. And since the 1960s, uh, nuclear reactor designs have evolved with, it, with the advances in science, materials, and research and development. The new wave of innovation, innovation includes more, the use of more passive and inherent, and inherent safety features that make more use of natural phenomena such as uh, gravity, conventional heat transfer, and so on. And they help limit the control and limit deviations from normal operation. This may mean, for example, that you're going to be able to have less human interaction, so less chance for human error and fewer active components that would require maintenance and repair throughout the operating life. 
Another difference with these new technologies is that many use substances to remove and transfer different substances to remove and transfer heat from the core uh, as compared to the traditional water cooling uh, reactor. These substances include molten salt, gas, or liquid metals. These substances in combination with new fuel designs and other features offer some desirable characteristics, such as the ability to reach higher temperatures at lower pressures. Such features allow for broader, more efficient use of SMR technology than just the uh, traditional electrical production. <clears throat> These types of uh, applications include district heating, desalination, and other industrial ac applications that would require a, a, a very high heat source. Next slide, please. Many countries, citizens, and organizations are interested in SMRs because they've been seen to be an additional way to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, emissions as part of a balanced energy mix. The passive safety features of SMRs are also attractive features since they allow a newer approach to operations, including less on-site staff, remote monitoring and uh, less reliance on operator actions. As discussed, SMRs can be used in the application for desalination and district heating, or perhaps for providing energy for mines up north. Many countries and indeed the nuclear re regulators see this as an important opportunity and would like to work together to ensure that the, the regulator is enabling safe deployment of these reactors. I will now pass the presentation on to Sarah. Thanks so much, Steve, for that. Um, good, good evening, my name is Sarah Eaton. And um, as Andrea introduced myself, I'm the director of the Advanced Reactor Licensing Division. So we'll move forward and talk about the CNSC approach to licensing SMRs. Next slide, please, Andrea. So the CNSC licensing approach is one that's rooted in over 75 years of experience, fundamentally being objective and independent in our decision-making and oversight is key for us. It's the foundation for building public trust and confidence in the CNSC. Safety is paramount in all that we do in the nuclear sector, for us as the regulator and for the industry, but it's the licensee's responsibility to ensure the safety of their operations. Our approach to regulation is technology neutral. And so what that means is it's not related to one technology or another technology guided by, and this technology neutral framework is guided by our flexible and robust regulatory framework. When a license application is received, we review the safety case that's before us and make recommendations to the commission on whether or not an applicant should be granted a license. Next slide, please. The pyramid on the right shows how our regulatory framework is set up. On the top, we have the Nuclear Safety and Control Act. This is the key piece of legislation for us. Underneath that, we have the regulations. There are a number of regulations that apply to SMRs, specifically the class one regulations. These are the same regulations that would reply to a conventional or large traditional nuclear power plant. Any licenses for SMRs would be issued by the commission ensuring that the application meets the requirements in the act and the regulations. If a license was issued, the license would be specific to the facility, in this case, the SMR. License condition handbooks are issued alongside the license. These handbooks outline uh, further explanations, guidance, and requirements for licensees. They identify which codes or standards the licensee must follow. These documents are expected to be used in conjunction with license application guides to develop a project specific licensing basis. They also include regulatory documents that are applicable to that facility. Regulatory documents provide further guidance and requirements and you can read them all on our website. Any license application will need to address all 14 safety and control areas um, in the licensing process commensurate with a graded approach. Next slide, please. This slide shows the stages in SMR lifecycle licensing. As you can see, there are five distinct stages um, and each stage requires a CNSC authorization. And in this case, the CNSC authorization is given by the commission. 
CNSC commissioners render decisions in transparent public hearings. Hearings are generally open to the public and webcast live. Over the years, the Commission has demonstrated openness and flexibility to facilitate participation, to be more responsive to requests and expectations of interested parties, and to increase the contribution and recognition of Indigenous nations and communities in its regulatory processes. Whenever we can, um, the CNSC holds hearings in communities that are most affected by the decision. But with a result of uh, our current COVID situation, we've certainly adapted and been flexible to be able to move to a virtual hearing process, and we foresee hybrid uh, hearing processes in our future. When the Commission issues a record of decision, it outlines the decisions, views, and directions of the Commission. The license issued uh, outlines the license conditions applicable. The record of decision can also contain specific requirements to the licensee or to staff. Licensees are responsible for ensuring their license activities are conducted safely, and CNSC staff perform compliance activities against the licensing basis. Next slide, please. Safety and control areas. The CNSC safety and control areas are the technical topics used to review, assess, verify, and report on regulatory requirements and performance across all regulated facilities and activities. All of these SCAs apply to SMR projects. License application guides are organized around these topics and, are, and these topics are what we use to assess the license applications. There are 14 SCAs that are grouped according to their functional areas. On the left, we see management. In the center, facility and equipment. On the right, core control and processes. There are regulatory documents for each safety and control area and other matters of regulatory interest, which again can be found on our website. Next slide, please. Environmental reviews for SMRs. Depending on the location and energy output of a proposed SMR, the application will be subject to one or more types of environmental review. An impact assessment under the Impact Assessment Act is required if the proposed SMR exceeds the thresholds of the public activities regulations, and those are listed on the slide. An SMR could also be could also require an environmental assess assessment conducted by another jurisdiction, such as a province or region covered by a land claim agreement. If no impact assessment is required under the Impact Assessment Act, an environmental protection review will be conducted by CNSC staff, CNSC staff following the requirements of the Nuclear Safety and Control Act. Next slide, please. International cooperation. The CNSC is certainly active in various international activities on the readiness for the regulation of SMR projects worldwide. For Canadian SMR projects, international collaboration can be used to enhance efficiency and effectiveness of our technical assessments. We do this by sharing lessons learned, leveraging the science information, scientific information of technical assessments, including research and development data. Scientific information can be used by multiple regulatory bodies of different countries, as long as the information is of sufficient quality for use in decision making. Another major benefit of international cooperation is that regulators can establish conditions for increased mutual recognition of regulator, regulators' assessment activities and the ability to conduct joint assessments. Ultimately, this support supports convergence and promotes harmonization of regulatory practices. If you go onto our CNSC website, you can read the terms of reference for our memorandums of cooperation with both the UK nuclear regulator and also the United States nuclear regulator. In addition, we had some great success this year um, in, or I should say in 2021, uh, in publishing some of the work plans that we did with the US NRC, the US Nuclear Regulatory Commission, uh, and those are available on our website. Next slide, please. Oh, I, sorry, at this point, I'm gonna pass it back to Steve, who's gonna walk us through uh, the vendor design review process. Okay, thanks, Sarah. Uh, <clears throat> the CNSC has a pre-licensing activity called the vendor design review. Uh, in this context, a vendor is uh, an organization that is designing a nuclear reactor. Next slide, please. VDR is an optional service provided by the CNSC for assessing a vendor's reactor design. It's a pre-licensing process where the CNSC provides early feedback to the technology developer. Uh, it, it looks at how the vendor is addressing Canadian requirements in their design 
and safety analysis activities, taking into account new design features and approaches. Key issues emerging in the design that are identified that could impact the licensing process for a future project referencing the vendor design review, uh, the vendor's design. Uh, pro and we also look at progress by the vendor to address outstanding issues. So at each, each during each phase, uh, issues will be identified and we'll follow up on those in future phases. The process is governor, governed by a regulatory document uh, uh, Reg Doc 3.5.4, which can be found on our website. And that uh, document will outline the objectives and scope of 19 focus areas. The focus areas include topics of significant safety importance to a design so that any identified issues can be addressed early in the design process. The focus areas range from highly technical areas for reactor control, reactor core design and fuel design to cross cutting programmatic, programmatic areas such as research and development and management systems. VDRs are typically, or VDRs typically consist of two phases with each phase representing an increasing level of detail. A vendor may opt for a phase three a review to follow up from phase two or to address another relevant topic for their particular design. Note that much of the detailed information resulting from the design review, including the vendor submissions of documentation, may be considered commercially confidential as per the terms of service agreement. The public is informed of the high level outcomes of the VDR review work by, posts, by a posting on a, of an executive summary on our, on our website. The VDR provides information about design and safety analysis that can be leveraged to inform uh, licensing for a specific project. It's not a design certification nor a licensing uh, activity. Uh, well, now I'd like to pass the presentation over to uh, Dylan. Thank you. Good evening and thank you, Steve. Uh, my name is Dylan Sonkorn. Um, I'm a project officer with the Advanced Reactor Licensing Division at the CNSC. Over the next few slides, I'm gonna be providing some information regarding the current SMR applications that are ongoing in Canada. Next slide, please. Uh, Ontario Power Generation holds a license to prepare a site for deploying an SMR on the land next to the current Darlington Nuclear Generating Station in Clarington, Ontario. In December of 2021, Ontario Power Generation selected the GE Hitachi BWRX300 technology for the site. The GE Hitachi design is a 300 megawatt boiling water reactor. Ontario Power Generation is intending to apply for the license to construct later this year in the fall. Next slide, please. Also in Ontario, Global First Power submitted a license application in March of 2019 for a license to prepare site for a 15 thermal megawatt reactor facility to, to be deployed on the land at the Chalk River Laboratories. According to GFP, the facility will provide either high quality heat or up to five megawatts of electrical power. Global First Power is co-owned by Ontario Power Generation and the designer of the reactor technology, UltraSafe Nuclear Corporation. Note that CNSC has completed a phase one vendor design review for this design and is currently undergoing the phase two review. This will be a full-scale commercial demonstration facility. GFP has indicated that it will be used to demonstrate the reactor concept, including commercial viability, uh, integrated facility technical performance, uh, conduct of licensing operations and maintenance, gathering of technical experience, uh, security and safeguards by design provisions and also supporting staff training and certification. The CNSC is currently conducting an environmental assessment under the Canadian Environmental Assessment Act 2012 for this project. The next step in the process is for GFP to submit its draft environmental impact statement, which is expected later in 2022. Uh, later at the end of this presentation, we are going to provide some more details on a webinar that we will be having next month on this project. Next slide, please. 
Uh, over in Saskatchewan, Sask Power is collaborating with OPG, New Brunswick Power, Bruce Power, and others, uh, and are undergoing an evaluation of small modular reactors. At this time, um, no specific site or technology has been selected. Uh, the image on the right shows the proposed project schedule with milestones and key decisions. Uh, Sask Power uh, would like to have a construction decision by 2029. Uh, more information can be found at Sask Power's website listed at the bottom of the slide. Next slide, please. Uh, now in New Brunswick, uh, NB Power is currently working with two reactor developers to support advanced reactor deployment. Uh, the two de designers are Arc Canada and Voltex. Um, at this time, a license application has not been submitted. Uh, the two designers that are being considered, um, they are listed. Um, if you go to the website, there is some more information there um, and the work that the province is doing. Uh, both ARC and Moltex have completed a phase one vendor design review as part of the pre-licensing work that Steve was talking about earlier in this presentation. On the CNSC's website, uh, you can find an executive summary for the reviews that the CNSC completed. Uh, one additional thing to note is that for both the New Brunswick and Saskatchewan projects, as they continue to progress, we will be offering future webinars to give everyone more information. I'm going to pass it back to Sarah for the final few slides. Next slide, please. Thanks very much, Dylan. I'll go to the next slide, please, Tiffany. So what we're hoping that you'll take away from this session is that the nuclear industry may be changing as a result of the potential for SMRs to be constructed in many locations. There are economic and environmental reports that talk to the importance of nuclear power to reduce global consumption of fossil fuels. Whether that, that future comes to realization is undetermined, but what we want you to know is that as a, the nuclear regulator, we are ready to regulate these new technologies. We have a regulatory framework that is flexible and adaptable. We're an organization built on continuous improvement, and this means we're always looking at how we do our work and how we can improve our understanding of these new technologies. At the CNSC, nuclear safety is our key focus, and we provide assurance that we will maintain nuclear safety during this new time of SMRs. Next slide, please. So in conclusion, we'd like to leave you with these four points. The CNSC is a world-class regulator. We have over 75 years of experience and are building on this experience to better under our understanding and knowledge of new and innovative technologies. We're collaborating with our provincial and international counterparts, applicants, reactor designers, the public and indigenous communities and nations. Every group has a role and ours is clear, the regulation of SMRs, but there's a lot we can learn and share with each other. Interest in SMRs is high. There's interest across the country. We know the plans for two SMRs in Ontario and we're assessing a number of designs through our vendor design review program. Our final point is that we wanna hear from you. We're eager to hear your questions, your concerns, and your interest in SMRs. As the OPG and Global First Power projects progress, we'll have many more of these sessions. And as new projects come up, we'll share that information as well. But you don't have to wait for the next webinar to learn more. You can always reach out to us. Next slide, please. Speaking of webinars, we have two planned for March in both official languages. They're both, they're both on the Global First Power Project, so it's really one webinar, but in both languages. Um, the webinar will focus on the Global First Power Project um, and the ongoing environmental assessment. You can register here on our website, um, and you can register on the main page, and we've also included the link here especially. So that's next slide, please. So that's the end of our uh, our presentation. Thanks so much for joining us, uh, and we look forward to any questions you have. As Andrea uh, mentioned at the beginning, you certainly can just type them into the into the chat. Thank you.